Hi, welcome to the Jansen Art Studio. I'm David Jansen. Welcome to the DVD, The Cerulean Wobber, where I'm going to be following right along with some of the techniques here that we do in our, our book here, The Art of Painting, The Garden of Birds. We're going to be, this has several uh, painting lessons in here, nine painting lessons. And in the whole front of the book here, it has a step-by-step uh, thing of, of uh, techniques that I use to uh, paint birds, some of the different detailing techniques that I use and undertoning techniques and so on and so forth. So if you want to paint some more or have some more in-depth instructions on, you know, the birding techniques that I use to create all of the wonderful bird paintings that we do here at the studio, this book is available now and it's a wonderful one. But what we have here is the uh, Cerulean Wobbler here. And, um, we have, uh, it's, I painted it up on a 14 by 18 canvas. I'm going to do it up here on a 16 by 20, leaving a little bit more of a vignetted surface this time. I love this painting, uh, and I'm going to walk you through slowly into the, the painting of it. We're going to start here by uh, just using some color. I love this vignetted look to it. That's where the, the canvas, uh, you know, takes back over the colors that you use. And uh, it's it's becoming extremely popular with uh, painters, and especially here with our customers at the studio. So I'm going to uh, do that. Uh, then we'll paint these lovely uh, heritage roses right with this uh, little bird as we get going. So let's get right into it because it's a heck of a lot of fun. So first what I did is I just transferred to major designs. Um, these roses are so casual uh, in their painting that it, it, they're difficult to transfer. So I don't even worry about transferring the uh, entire pattern to them. Just an idea for their size because being so casual, they're hard to, I'm not going to, well, in other words, I'm not going to be able to paint them exactly the same way that I did that one. Get the same look because colors are going to come off a little bit different. We're doing all the primer, but I will be able to capture the whole essence of it and, and, and show you along the way. So we'll have a real good idea and we'll paint some beautiful ones. Although they'll be a little different, they'll still be just as beautiful. Okay. I'm going to take my three quarter inch brush here. And let me just slide this off to the side here for a second. Matter of fact, we might as well just step a little bit further back, guys. There we go. And uh, so we can see a little bit more of the canvas and, and this at the same time as we set up the color. So I'm going to take some extender, which got a little green in it from one of my last paintings. That's okay. I'm going to take up some th uh, thalo blue up here. I'm going to add uh, just a little bit of the uh, red violet to it, which takes it towards a uh, an ultramarine type of blue. And I'll add quite a bit of white here to this. Quite a bit of white. Lighten this up. Let's go right down into the extender and thin that out. This will give us some uh, some color to apply to the surface. And we want to uh, be a little bit light with it right now so you still be able to see your bird through uh, some of this painting here. So let's get just a touch more of that red violet into that. I love that color and walk this right down into a white and add some of this uh, extender into that. Nice thin. It's going to take a lot of color to get this out but I'm going to let this uh, before it reaches the end of the canvas up there let it vignette out to back up to the um, to the the blue I mean to the white again so I'll scrub it out like this. You can take your uh, paper towel and pull in just a little bit too. But I like to leave a few little stops and starts of the brushwork there because that adds a lot of interest to the painting. So let's just streak some of this down. We'll thin this out a little bit more. Grab some of this down through here. Grab some of this X motion back and forth. That just adds a lot to the painting. And uh, we'll grab some of that right up here. That's nice. Pull some of that down just a bit. Make that fade away a bit down in there right down right down past this area right into here that's good we'll do more we'll add a little bit more color into this let's get a little bit a uh, little bit heavier cerulean just a little uh, a little bit heavier uh, thalo excuse me cerulean wobber thalo blue cerulean's made by thalo blue and and white and a little bit of yellow uh, basically we'll just add a little bit more color right here in where that bird is going to be. So we'll push that in there like that and stretch that out a bit. And you can pull some of that extra off, but I want it to be a little bit heavier right down in there. 
Now that is, that is, I've got this, you see where that's on the surface. That's a little bit wet, a little bit wetter than I like it to be. I added a little bit too much extender. And so I'll just show you, might as well show you how to do this. I'm going to, because I'm going to want to paint that bird pretty quickly here. So I'm going to remove some of that, that wetness off of that. And I'm going to reapply some of this just a little bit more dry right in that area. So it's a little bit less extender here. There we go. And you can see I'll lose that bird a little bit if I'm not too careful. But this is this time it's a little bit stiffer. It feels stiffer on the brush. That's what I want to happen. I want it a little stiffer. Here, consistency, and I discuss it in the book a lot. Consistency is extremely important in your painting. Uh, here, we don't use stuff that's really really thin. I don't use bottled acrylics or flow acrylics because. You, they just won't work with these techniques I use. I use the Heritage and I thicken it out a bit. And it's easy to thin out, as you can see. I thinned it out a little too much. But um, it's very easy to thin out and and uh, get some different looks. But uh, it's more difficult to thicken it up if you get it on too thin. So that's why I like to start with it kind of thick. So that's got that in there. Now let's drop right down here. Let's add a little Hansa. A little black. You can also uh, take a little pine green. If you know if you want to use the pine green color that I use in the book, you can drop that in there as well. Here, let's make a nice, lovely green. Let's keep it kind of soft here first. A little bit of white, just to soften that out a bit, and just a little bit of our thinner, our thinner, a little bit of our extender, which will make it thinner. And and I'll put some of this right in right up by the wobbler down through this area and we'll start pulling this out okay start pulling this color out here there we go and out and let that come down here get a little white into that a little softer right out through here and you can use your towel like this to drag over that surface and Put some of that in and soften it out. Get that nice movement in there. Here we go. Out through here. Like this, down through there. That's just nice movement. I like some of the crossing movement. Let it soften out a bit. Let it find its, its uh, level here. There we go, like that. And that's that's just good, and I love this, the green and the blue kind of overriding in that area there. That works out pretty nice. We're gonna wanna, again, deepen it a little bit more as well. Right there in the center, let's just take a little green, a little black. Hansa yellow, you can use the Hansa yellow and black or a little bit of blue in there. They all make some various greens. And we wanna come back in here and we want to deepen this green. Let's add just a touch of blue to that too. Why not? Just a touch into this area. Deepen that in there. White where it's going to play up against that wobbler. Here. Some nicer, deeper toned color in there. Pull some of that out. Establish some of that nice movement into that ground, but this also applies heavier color right in this area And the wobbler will uh, come out better against some of that heavier color. Let's streak a little bit of that out like that Okay, so we'll set that up here we'll streak that out just a bit. Here we go and Then I'm going to take a brownish color, which is red and black. Okay, I'll just drop some of that right down here red and black Two parts red, one part black. You can have a touch of, uh, of yellow in there to help that. You could also add some burnt sienna if you want. If you have that on the palette, if you're painting from the bird book. Get a little burnt sienna, all of those. It's just a nice brownish kind of color. And I'm just going to follow right along and just kind of streak out a couple of uh, stems, kind of thing like that. And I'll just run my finger through that so they soften out like that. Okay, and... I like to keep them kind of soft. You could put a little greenish kind of color into them and just vary the color a little bit. Here, just use the chisel of that big brush. Just let that happen there. 
and then we'll get out of there. You know, like that. That's good. That puts in some of that movement. We'll add other movements and stuff like that uh, a little bit later on. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go in and start some of the bird here. Okay, so you can use any number of brushes. I'm going to use a number four flat here to start out with. You could use a four or a six, anyone in here. Number four flat, and I'm going to start with the undertone of the bird. So let's come in a little bit closer here. We'll move him right over here to the side so we can see a little bit of our palette. Maybe just a bit in, just a bit more. And we'll set this up on the edge here so you can see that. Right there. Okay, so we'll paint this little wobbler here. And uh, I'm just going to take some of my phthalo here. And we'll set up a little area we can paint here. Phthalo, maybe a little bit of our blue here. I mean our black. A little bit of our red violet here. And some white. And I love my white. Really, really thick. So nice thick white there. We'll just leave that area up there so we can paint. We're going to come in with kind of a... You know, we have to find his undertone. So his undertone will be kind of a medium blue area. A little bit of black into that so it's a little softer, but we'll, which will gray it. So a blue and a little black, a little white. You can have it a little bit of towards the violet side. Just a little bit with a little red violet if you want. That's not all that necessary, but any one of those in there. It's just a nice undertone. This is all going to cover up. And what we'll do is we'll come in and we'll just come in and set the area here for his head. I'm just going to pull down like this. We'll leave, we'll go right around the area where his eye is. And we'll base in here. And I just kind of following the contour of his head as I'm doing this. We'll follow the contour of his head here. Right down like that. Short little strokes. Okay, short little strokes. We'll put a little bit down underneath him here just like that and so you can get a little bit almost like a feathering look to him there we'll have some more blue and I I change the blue up every once in a while like I'll, I'll maybe I'll brighten it here just a bit I'll, I always kind of you know mix um, and, and I mix for variation I mix for change I got a letter from a lady here just a little while ago, beautiful painter. She wrote me and she said, I'm afraid to use Heritage because I'm not very good at mixing. And so I'm afraid I can't make the same color. And my answer to that is I never, I mix because I want variation. I mix because I don't want the same color. What bottled acrylics have done to us is made us mix all the, think we have to have the same color. But an artist doesn't do that. An artist mixes for, for variation. A color is constantly changing in its tone throughout the painting. It doesn't repeat itself. So we want to have some variation to that. That's what we want. Let's put a little bit of blue. Uh, let's touch in a few more little areas of blue. Maybe some blue back through here. Back by his tail. Okay. He has his uh, wing coverts and um, uh, areas here. We can just mix up a little bit more blue here. Let's give just a little uh, touch to the, the tips of these little coverts here. The, the uh, greater coverts and these medium coverts here up. So up and along his mantle, his area here of his brush, of the bird, and up and through here. Uh, we can tap a little bit down, right down to here, maybe a touch under his wing. We'll leave the rest of him there kind of, kind of gray color, okay? We'll do a gray. So we're just going to reach over. We can grab a little black, right, with this, a little gray. Sometimes I'll warm it, maybe even a little bit of this greenish color into that to warm that gray just a bit here, okay? Sometimes I'll cool it with a little bit of the blue. So but a nice gray color there. We'll use that for basically some of the other areas here on him. You'll have some down here through his neck feathers. Right down through here like this. We'll go right up and around like that. All the way through the his nape of his neck there. Down along the uh, his main part of his body here. Cute little bird. I've painted him a couple times in my painting career. This little cerulean wobbler. 
and uh, we'll put some green, I mean, excuse me, some gray right down onto his back here. Little touches and around some of these areas here. Maybe just a touch and so in the tail, it's gonna be mostly dark, but you put some in for variation, color variation. There we go. You might want a streak or two of that or even a streak or two of blue just right in here where his flight feathers, his primary ones here and his secondaries and tarsals. There, that's pretty good. So it sets that in on him. Then we'll darken down a little black, maybe a touch of blue into that so it's quite dark here. And this is what we'll use. We'll pull in, um, we'll streak in right from the edge here, right from the end. We'll just pull in with the chisel of the brush like this. And we'll let it go ahead and start to feather just a little bit. Um, dark tips out here. Here we go. One right out here. Pull in. There, like that. Okay, and we'll pull in here from the tip of his wing in, like that. Pull in, just use the chisel of the brush and this, this gives some nice movement to his, his wing. It's larger area feathering type things that I do. We'll pull some of this down right through here. So just put some of that in on his wing. So brings his wing uh, forward. There'll be a, a little bit of the dark right up here to help separate that wing. Right in there like that. We'll put a little uh, stroke or so of it down the side here. Nice little dark. See some of that coming right there. And it'll cause his body to turn by the time we put shadow and stuff in there on that side. That'll work out nice there. And... Um, We'll continue on with a, maybe a touch or so up into here. Right between his eye, his eye ring, and his beak, right in there. So I do first large areas, and then I just use the tip or the corner of the brush here, and I start to uh, find some of the smaller uh, areas of him. Okay, work. So he's got a pretty good little look building to him here. Let's get that um, little bit more of this darker in through here. Darker edge in there. We'll use some negative feathering techniques in here in just a little bit. That'll set him in there like that, okay? Maybe a little bit of grayish tone down here at the base, bottom side of his body here. Right down into that area there. Now he's set up for us to do some, um, for us to start to do a little bit of detail and feathering. One of the things I will add to him uh, right away here is uh, his beak. So I'll take some black here. Take the black. I'm going to go to my number four. This is my favorite uh, bird painting brush. My number four round. And I'll very carefully here apply in the shape of his beak. Here, he has a nice little point to that beak, and I want to make sure that I render that correctly. Okay, and then I'll add just a touch of gray to that, so it's a bit different. And then we'll do the bottom of his beak here, so just a bit different. I'll go back, touch back into um, my black, and let's add his eye. Being careful to leave a little bit of that blue around for his eye ring. And take care with the size of his eye there too. Okay, that's where they get a lot of their life and energy. Don't make it too big. Don't make it too big there. Okay. And uh, then we'll come in here and let's start to add a little bit of the uh, white like maybe we'll tap right into the edge here let's just model that right down just a point of this round model that right with the white and let's come in and let's just set some of the work of his eye ring now in the in the book you'll see me in the books and stuff you'll see me do this at all different kinds of times of the painting 
And um, when I did the original one here, I wanted to set it pretty quickly. It sets his contrast and then paint the painting to him. So I do it pretty quickly in the book, you know, and some of the book videos, I, I don't. I do it uh, later. And, uh, but it's, uh, you know, it's not a written rule when you do this. Sometimes I do it right away. I'm going to take a little bit of a white and put just a little bit of a shine there onto his eye. And then I usually paint that down into position and I'll, and I'll reset and work his eye here several times with some black. So it's hard to set the white because it sets a small area. It's easier to paint it up into position in this eye ring and stuff with the black. It's easier to paint it into position with the black than it is anywhere, uh, anything else, okay? So that's kind of good to remember there. Now let's go in and let's... Um, uh, We'll set that in and then we'll feather up here or, or start to stroke a little bit of the darker blue black or gray here looking again for you know this is more of a detail area but it's uh, we want to set some of the shadow coming right here out like this and I want to push that right up into that eye ring there we'll pull some out here like this this sets some of the motion to the feather the movement. So one of the things I like to do right away before I actually feather is to go through and adjust and, and capture some of the movement of the feathers that I'm about to do. So this movement. So right out into here where this is, you know, a little bit, needs a little more movement. I'll just grab some gray color here. And let's just grab some movement here. Grab some movement through some of these areas here. There like that. See? Soften those areas together there and grab some of that movement. Just add so much to that. Okay. Now what we're going to do is start to feather in the bird. And you can start in all kinds of areas. I'm going to stay with this um, number four here. And I'm going to start first with some of my light areas. And some of the light areas that I really want to build up. So first let's come in and uh, let's do the uh, light area and down the, the front of the bird here. This is an important area right in here in this white whitish kind of band that we have here. So I'll just pull down and see I've widened the brush out a little bit. And this will allow me to take several strokes and add some feathering movement. I'm not doing detailed feathers or anything. I'm just adding some feather-like movements in here. And we'll pull up right up towards that chin area here and let it fade away as it goes out here towards this other end. I can use the brush on its chisel or its point to add some small little movements there, which add a lot to the uh, to the bird. But I just want to take a strike or two of that down like that. Okay. We'll add a little bit of that grayness to it here, and we'll do some big. Now this I can this I also will do many times, not with the round but with a larger flat as I add large area feathering. It's called large area feathering, I call it. And so most of the time I do it with like a flat. But since I have this, and he's a small little bird, I can just flatten out my little round here. And I just want to get some of the movement, capture some of the, the movement here. But it's got to stay very soft. We'll slowly lighten up just a bit. It's got to stay a little soft here. A little bit soft. There we go. Just like that. Just like that, okay. And we'll pick up some more light right with that little gray. Let's continue on. Let's uh, add a little light touch right in here, which is some of the light feather banding between his uh, co uh, coverts and the light feathers there. A little bit of that that's going to go right down here on this other set of covert that covers up his primaries there and you can add some light blue streaks down through there it's going to help get some of that movement in there any part you know you can work back and forth any part of this decoration on him at any time I'm going to take some lighter blue Actually, it's just kind of the sky color. I just reached over and grabbed some of that. We'll go down and 
feather up or start the movement here to the back of his head. Right here where it's going to go over that gray, right into that, that there. And it's just creating the movement here. So all I'm looking for is movement in the in the bird right now. I'm not into full full feathering. I'm just movement. Still dividing up these areas and adding some movement here. Kind of a bluish color, right into the feather, or into the wing there, up into this part here. There we go. Down into there. Let's grab some of that and do some of the part of his head, following the contours of his head, and then back down his head this way. Like that. Cute little bird. He's starting to come to life there. Now, many times I will jump out and start other parts of the bird now, other accent areas or flowers or something like that. But since we got it going pretty good on him, I'm going to continue on. But I do like to to work that. You have a sample, you know, we have a final that we're looking at. And, and so you can, you know, use that pretty much as an idea. But when I develop a lot of designs that I, you know, and I create a plan for the painting and I don't know where I'm going, I evolve it and I'll jump out and start painting some of the accent areas right now just to get colors into them. But uh, we've got a pretty good idea where we're going here with this one. So I'm going to take a little blue and a little white, model that onto the brush here. And I'm just going to put a little highlight stroke right down that lower part of his beak. I'll add a little interest in that. Little model color will come off. That's what I'm looking for. Maybe a little bit of a shine there. Down like that. Onto the bird. A little bit here, a little bit more of a shine. Just put a little gray in the brush and you can back some of that back out again. It just gets a lot of interest to that, to him there. Maybe a tiny bit of gray just to break up the solid black there at the top of him. And uh, then we'll come back with, and when I generally when I feather and stuff, I work back and forth, and so I'm going to want a little bit of that darker blue showing up just a little bit here and there in this area. So I feather that again, just right in there. And see, so you get those overrides, and it's the darks and the lights that really help you with your look of feathering and stuff. So generally on the birds, they have right back behind the eye, halfway through the head here, they have like a a little valley in their head it goes this way it divides those feathers up and we'll put just a little dark in that push that in and then let that feather right down along his cheek yeah, so we'll just go ahead and pull that again right in there all right just little tiny dark areas left of feathers one back here that kind of lifts his head feathers up right there. Maybe a little bit of dark feathering right in here, pulling out. That's that band there. That's nice. And we'll go back through and restate and work those lights again. So let's grab some of that light. Let's drop it right here. Model that into the brush with some of those with some of those blues and stuff. And Let's come back here, be very, very careful. Pull a little slower so the hairs of the brush stay fanned out a bit and you'll get that nice pullover look uh, to the feathers here. You can use the little chisel to just get a little variation or the little point, but I like that little chisel like that. And I'll add just a stroke or two up here to the top, a little there's that light coloring there. We'll model into some of that blue and white there. It's just a little bit on the brush. And we'll uh, add some nice streaky here. Now, generally this gets a little too light. And it's a little light on mine there too, but it's breaking it up. So what I do is I do what I call negative feathering. I go back and I pick up some dark right into it. And I stroke out what I don't want, leaving the little light tips up there tap out what I don't want as far as those feathers are 
in that area. And I will generally repeat that kind of look several times until I get the look to the feather that I want that area to have. So I'm going to do this just a couple of times here. Back and forth. And let's just use more of a edge here. Just put a little bit there. There we go. And see, I'm real careful. Small little strokes around the eye. Follow the contour. Small little strokes here. Little taps are going to go right up here. So we'll put a little more dark, like right up into here. Because he's got really a lot of dark on him. And then we'll put some light. Some white and blue. Light color taps. Right up in that area too. Right as well. See if we can get that to lay off there properly. There we go. And I'll just tap a little bit here. That'll set that beak into the feathers. And um, then we'll stroke some of that out here and here, like that. A little movement. Try not to put them in. I used to, uh, when I started painting these, I, then I started a feather. I'd get them all the same length, and then the next column was almost like they lined up like little soldiers. So. Now I know better to come back in with a little dark and and uh, take some out, a little negative. Take some out. And uh, I'm going to make his head a little bit more blue, a little more cerulean. So a little less gray into it, a little bit more blue. That's a good color. He needs to be just a bit brighter. There. Let's reach over and get another dose of bright. I want some brighter blue into him. Here. So when I go the feather like this, I end up usually doing it several times. Yeah, that's good. And back and forth, get the colors and the movements and the tones. So I'll go back and forth several times until I get those tones just the way I want them. Here, touch into that. Let's get a little darker blue again. Back and forth. Try not to line the strokes up so they'll all get a little different. Okay. Here, get a little bit of that. And there, like that. That's pretty. I'll set that blue and black and really set that contrast in close to his eye. Pull down through there. That's nice. Little touches. A little bit of that blue on his beak if it's not showing up too well. Makes that, oh, that's cute. That's coming cute. And then we'll model in some more white into this. Sometimes I'll edge the white, you know, like this. You'll see me in some lessons edge the white one side of the brush. And that gives you more of a, a white uh, look to the feather. See that little light edge that it gets there. So sometimes I do that if I want to make like a, like a row of feathers or something that's perfect with the little white edges like that. Um, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Here, a variation. I, I paint lots of different techniques and trying to always make my birds look a little different and learn a little more from each time I paint a bird. Here, that is kind of nice with that one. Put little touches of that, maybe a little bit back here. Let's grab some, let's grab a little bit of that look right back there. To the tips of that rows of feathers. Very soft back here, a little bit. Uh, just movement, so you don't want to have as much line detail back here because we want it to fade away. So we'll just drop a few little guys back here. There we go, like that. Tap in. I love that nice stick of white because it allows you to do all these wonderful techniques here. Let's feather up through here just a bit, right into some of that blue. Yeah. 
This feather is body there. Touch. Let's get some of that nice blue back into that. And feather through that. Again, modeling it back and forth gives you that interest. Put a little of that in, back to a little blue. Paint it back out. Again, that's that nice movement that we want to have. Let's grab some more black, some nice fresh black. We'll put that on the brush. We'll put a nice edge, nice dark edge to this primary flight feather here. And we'll drag some of that right up here. The point of this, the scapula here, his feathers right there. Going along his back. Here to the back tarsal flight feathers that are back here. And we'll pull some of that black in here. Tips of it in. Just create a little bit of that flight feather movement there. Oh, I forgot a little part of a lower part of his body right here. A little blue here. A little bit of gray to feather that up. There we go. And you can draw, for his coverts here, you can draw little lines like I show you in the book on some of the things there, or put feather strokes in and then negatively paint those out. All kinds of ways you can do that. A little bit of blue. You can take some negative little strokes and paint some of those out. Get movement to just suggest the movement of the coverts there. Let's just grab some blue and black here. Put that on the brush and paint through that and that will leave the little light tips to the coverts. A little negative feathering there. One of the techniques I just love to use. Let's grab some light and let's put some of the light top part of the media cords there. There we go. A little bit of blue into that brush, painting up into that. And you can paint back up the other way too, up into that gray band to vary that gray there. And it's that undulating unevenness there that just makes it so pretty on him. And that's what we want to have. Undulating unevenness there. Let's take a little white right into that brush. Let's just pull down through that. Uneven. So you let that run off your brush. Pick up a little more. Let's come back this way. Now if you get that a little heavy... Like that's a little light right there. Not bad, but maybe just a bit. Let me just, just section with that. Accentuate that bit. Let's take a little dark. Pull through. Set that one up. And then you can just ever so lightly pull through some of the dark to set that back in place. And I like to do that. Again, that just, and that gives you a high and low to the feathering that you're doing there. Very much high and low. I'm going to come in and reset his eye with that nice dark. It's a nice dark touch there. I usually will put a shadow underneath the eye ring which helps brighten up that eye ring as well. And uh, pull some blue out from there. Right in there like that. It just really sets that whole eye ring and area up. And then any final feathering. Sometimes I'll do it with a little liner brush. This little point of this brush is doing very well on this bird. So I'm just going to keep it here. Any kind of little feathering that you want to do, that you want to pull through. Detail feathering now. Liner brush or one of the the point of this brush it just adds a few more little touches of feathers 
And you can paint some back out just a touch with some your blues. Kind of like that. A few little light touches. A few little light touches right between the eye and the and the uh, beak. Small little feathers. That's your small feather area. So a few little touches in there just add so much. Okay. They have, <clears throat> like I've said in several times in other DVDs, they have. I don't like bird speech. They they look too uh, Jurassic for me. So I'm just gonna. I just quickly made a statement of his feet like that, and uh, we'll come in here and feather down through here with some dark over that edge there. Just drop some of that in. I'll use sometimes large brush feathering techniques where I use my finger to pull those back and forth. Uh, sometimes I'll grab some gray, some light gray color, and pull that back through just to get some feathering interest in there. But I don't do too much um, to the feet. Usually I, I cover them up a bit or do something to cover up or just real quickly make a statement of them like this and get out of there um, because I don't want to, uh, you know, they're, they're not attractive. The... Uh, Bird's feet are just not very attractive. So usually I cover them up with a flower or cover them up with a leaf or something like that because I don't like to have them too uh, too distinguished in my paintings. We'll just bring this up a bit. Add some final little light feathering. you got a nice looking little bird. And of course we can revisit him again as we, um, as we head out to... You know, into the flowers and stuff. And I'm going to put a little more light dark onto him here, just so that 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 phthalo is just so wonderful on him for the contrast in here. So I'm just going to add a little more, just straight phthalo streaking into him here. That'll give a little more blue blue to him, nice cerulean type blue. Let's just get that nice dark right there. There we go. Gotta play against that sky. Nice cerulean look there. Nice grade look here. That'll drop down. Nice little stroke of light right underneath the beak that will pop that out and Set that beak in. It's good. There, like that. That's he's a nice looking uh, little guy there. But you can go back, um, you know, into those kinds of areas there and add more later if you want. Okay, how much you add is up to you. Okay, so add all of those little details. You had lots of step photos there to uh, show you what it is that you know I did on the those particular areas. Now, let's go out and let's paint some of the greens and stuff again. Let's get a little more color working down in there. Okay, a little more greens. A little more, um, we'll step back just a bit here. Okay, so we'll get some of our greens and our reds here. Step those into those areas there. The greens, first greens, we'll get reds in just a minute. Some greens, some nice darks, some blues with that, some nice blue-greens with that. Um, just take a stroke or two of that in there. See, and that's going to carry some of his colors in there as well. And see that contrast that that gets to that to him. And uh, we'll, we'll really pop him in just a minute. But first I want to just stroke a few of these around here, right up into this area. Get some of this down into this rose here, okay? And we're going to work our greens and our reds together here in just a second. And um, we're going to set the reds, which is the undertone, one of the undertones for the white roses here. So we'll take some red here and drop that there and some red violet. Kind of model those two together. And I'm going to come right in here. And this will be the bowl, basically the bowl. We put a little bit out into the reaching petals, 
but you really want to do kind of the bowl where that bowl of that rose is going to set now I'll come back just a bit more okay and uh then we'll and that's got a little grade from the green there so i just want to touch into that a bit and i'm going to push and we can even add a little sky color here to soften this just a bit and we'll push some of this right up into here push it around with your finger so it's not completely um dark we want it to fade away here we're going to have another little touch of red here which will be in the centers of this guy we'll have Another little touch in here, okay, and another little touch up in here, and we'll apply some more, like right in here. This will be the bowl of this rose. There's going to be some red area right down here, and I'm just going to take some red and just apply some red in there, just to put that in there, and we'll hit another little red area right out here. You know what is all in there we don't know I mean we know from our final photo but when I painted this I don't know I'm just putting up a a, a casual uh, a nice casual application of that now I'm gonna go to a larger brush this is a um, number eight you can go on an eight to a ten somewhere around there any one of those will work um, I want to take some more red here we're gonna start a whole area of whites with that so I'm gonna come right up here even with the little bits of green Help tone that down here. Some lighter color, and we're going to model that through our flower. Very casual like this. Just model that right through the flower here. And this kind of lets you shape up a little of the bowl. And I want you to paint like that. The bowl is just like this. And so we're just going to push some of this color around here. Push a little out into the reaching petals out here. Okay. Take a little idea of this nice soft color and push it around out here into this guy, way out here. Use your finger to help soften that out, okay? Push that around, right like that, okay? And uh, we'll grab some of this red. We're gonna have some of this right in here to this little rosebud, right in here to this one that's gonna be right in here, okay? We'll have a rounding kind of shape pinky red right here this is a bowl and this little rose will come around like this okay that's pretty good we'll have uh, this bowl coming into this one let's get a little more red into that just model those together and just kind of okay now i'm shaping the bowl i'm seeing the bowl of the rose here okay and uh, maybe a little darker movement of those colors right in here. There's some bits of shape of that rose there. And a little bit of pink right into the bowl here. There you go, like that. See how that just kind of shapes that all up, okay? And then we'll... Um, start to uh, physically paint some of the petals. Now, before you get into some of the petals, one of the things that helps them look so transparent is these lovely greens. So make sure that you have some lovely greens out here working in and out, and it's wet. The whole grounding in here has got to be wet. So work some of those greens right in there like that, and it's all got to be wet right up against those roses. Just work that green that red together like that. It's all got to be wet paint up in there. That's what's going to give it this lovely kind of uh, transparent look to it as you paint it. Is that love? Is all of that working of that color? Okay. We'll come in and um, so we'll have a lot of that green. Make sure you have green just all the way around. That's so important. Take a few minutes. Put that green right around those roses and those colors. Get that in there. Then we'll come in with some red and some red violet kind of modeled together. Not mixed, just kind of modeled it together. So they'll come off a little different. And let's just put some of that right into the center here. Okay. Maybe down this side a little bit to the back there of that one. So you get this modeled red and red violet. Red, cool red violet right into the center of the rose. 
that's what you're thinking contrast and cool right into the center a little brighter color as it's coming out of that you'll want a little of that color as you know model colors like a shadow to the bowl down the side there or, or so okay so I'm applying that so I'm thinking center and I'm thinking bottom shadowy color there I'm thinking all of those thinking little strokes of cool red violet shadow for the center of these little rosebuds you know push a little color into that one here this back one here hardly anything because it sits to the back just a little bit of soft movement there into the center like that just so you can say you have you've done that center okay now we'll take some of this big white here and you can start out on the bowl you can start out on the reaching petals it doesn't really make uh, too much a difference I'm going to come out here and just push in some of the the reaching petal areas here just take a big old dollop of this out Kind of draw this around. You could also start on the bowl. Doesn't make a difference here. Don't get so wrapped up in the copying of the, the photos though. Okay, so I just want to put some of that out and then I'll pick up some more here. And I just want to kind of pull stroking this in like this to kind of find the shape of these rose petals coming in like that. Okay. Coming in like that, that's good. If you uh, get too much or something like that, well, I'll show you in a second how you can take it off, but I'm gonna put a little bit more here. and Just pull that around, okay? And maybe take a little bit out here. Maybe that's an extra little bit right there. There we go, a little bit extra bit right there. There, like that. Pull in. You see, I'm working my brush all different kinds of ways. Now, you can also do this. You can lift out like this. You can lift out some of that light. So, if you want it to get overall the feeling of this petal here to get a little bit lighter here, take a little white. We can push that in and out a couple of times. So, you can go like that, wipe your brush. And I just wipe it on my big terry cloth towel that I film with a lot. And I can go back and forth and I can establish some some looks or some strokes or some petals or something like that in and out of that. Okay. I will take big old dollop of like nice pink color here. And let's just pull this up like that. Just get real loose with this painting here. Real loose and suggestive here. This model of light kind of cool color here. There, like that. Set some of that shape. Let's get in and reset some of that red. So if I get too much, I'll reset it. I'll just come back in and reset the color again. Just like that. Okay, reset that rose back in there like that. And I'll build. And so I'll build more light to where I think I, I need some more light. And I'll stroke out a bit to take some of that off. Okay. Set some of this rose in like that. Take some of this mottled light color. Let's build, start building the front of this rose. Maybe a couple times. Nice thick color. Okay. Pull down. Build that, think of the, the petal kind of rounding here a bit, like that. You can put some red back in your brush and lift off and get that modeling look to the rows like that. And like I say, you're not gonna be able to uh, copy everything I did on the other one, I can't. So I'm just gonna capture the rounding motion of the bowl here as much as I can, maybe the uh, edge of a petal and let's just capture that movement there for that one may capture uh may be able to capture let's push this out just a bit here and push these out like this so this petal comes out a bit i'm just watching my flower here let's uh capture the edge of a petal here 
kind of round the corner. Push that in and out. I'll do that a lot, pushing the color with my finger. Love to do that. Let's pick up a big old dollop of color and say that's the back of that rose. And push your finger into it so it's got some lost edges back in there. See? Build that a little bit more up here into the front. Build that petal, that rose up there. there go. There, like that. Pretty little. And build the look of another petal and push that up like that. Slowly build this rose. Let's get lots of this red and lots of this red violet here. Work these colors, these light colors. Model them into your brush. Push those colors in and out. That nice shadow side to that rose there. Build this side of the bowl. Open that rose up just a bit to that movement. So I'm pushing, I'm pushing around a lot of thick paint into the shape of this flower. Build the front of this bowl up. There. So you can just pick up the corner like that and you can just draw little petals like this. You could use the other side or wipe your brush and you know soften it out so I can push it like that and then use the other side just to kind of give like little petal edges and stuff like that. Draw some out here like that and put a little dark or so in your brush and stroke that back so you leave just a little bit of a light edge there. And there's lots of different ways to shape your flowers here. I'm gonna Push this back in like that. Loosen that up a bit. Let's grab a little bit more white. Big old dose of white right here like that. Let's just drop that right down in here in front on this rose. That puts that big forward petal there. A little bit of that transparent greeny look there. So as there, I just stroked in a little green just to get that transparency back into that front that I really like to have in that front. Let's build this edge up a bit. So it's just a constant building process here and then how much you want to leave on that rose. The final little statements of dark, light and dark back and forth here. to uh, leave that bowl shadow in there. And then um, narrowing down like, you know, into the center here. You wanna give the idea of other petals, push some other color in there. Into that center. There, like that. Pretty little rose. Pretty little rose shape here. And pretty quick here, I'm going to... That works. I'd like to get that nice rounding part to the bowl here without, without making it too powerful up here into the front. So I'm kind of stroking back and forth a couple times here, looking at its shape and then, you know, how much of that edge do I want to have. There we go. That's better. 
I like on the heritage roses that they close down here into the center. So I'm just trying to capture that look here. This is the most important one too, by the way. Now, before you even go, uh, you know, too much farther, we should be stopping right in about in there because you should work a couple of roses at a time. And then one of the things you're also going to do is what we call negative painting. You're going to take some black and some blue and some dark and you're going to come in here like this and you're going to come in and you're going to reshape these petals a little bit. And I'm probably going to push back and forth a little, but we're going to shape some of these outside edges and stuff like that here with our dark color, which is going to put the contrast right out where we want to have it as well. There, but we want to have some dark contrast there. I want to come in here. Whoop, that's a little, I hit too much solid blue. So take a little green and a little black with that. And I'm just going to push in here, draw that in. And see how that really lightens that edge of that rose. I mean, lifts that rose right off the surface there. So we want to have that right in there and just move that color around. Just move that around. There we go. Just like that. And pull some of that into the flower to actually darken the flower, but make the flower look more transparent. Just drop that edge in there like that. Drop some of these in here. If you feel your flower got a little bit heavy looking in color, put some green in it and that'll push that right back in, soften that out. And again, you can go back and forth with some of those colors to make that flower look lighter and airier. Or you can lift out slightly again, here like this, till you get that look to those petals that you want to have. Or come back out right against that dark and reshape another darker stroke like that. That's pretty. Put another dose of light right up over that edge like that and pull back to get, lighten up that edge like that. That works well. Maybe get the roundness to the bottom of the rose here. Another little stroke. So you see it's quite a bit, but all of this I'm watching against that contrast of that uh, of him there as well. Let's go in now. The other roses I paint quite a bit faster. So I'll come in and let's uh, work this lights up into here. I'll put some right into here. Some of that coloring right out into there. Push that around a little bit, up and down, in and out, around. It's the amount, how easy are these roses to paint? It's the amount of color that you leave on the surface. There's a lot of color here. I'm pushing around a lot of color and doing what Sargent does is just let stuff just kind of feel like it's going to flow together. Uh, that's kind of what I work for. Wiggle it around and kind of flow it together till you get this, uh, um, this beautiful variation to the colors. Okay, so it's, and it's very lovely that way. I'm going to take some more light, big old dollop of the light color. Let's come right out uh, in here and, and stead up where these rose petals are going to be. Here, see the big old dollops of that white like that. And then I'll just pull some of that in to create some of that movement in here like this. And... We'll just let that kind of soften out here like that. Maybe just wiggle a little here like that. Let this just kind of air get transparent and airy back here like that. Build that a couple of times right up here in the front. Get some of that pink in there. That's better. I don't like, if I have too much shadow there, I get too much of a light dark and too much contrast, which is gonna take away from him. So just get some of that 
Just get some of that pink right down into there. That'll soften that edge of those petals. See, and look at all that beautiful color movement that we have down there. And then we'll come in and set that light here. That lovely light. There. That's pretty. There we go. Let's drop that in like that. Move this petal over just a bit. There we go. You can see you can do that. See? You can do that kind of stuff. Move those around. And they're, and they're fun. Let's take, uh, let's go right up. Imagine right where the bowl of that edge is going to be here. We'll put a little light to it. And we'll just add a little movement to the bowl like that. Okay. Maybe a bit of shadowing to that. Like that. So you can see how fast that goes. Let's get just a bit of light right there. Okay. And we'll wiggle this right in there like that put in that edge grab a little bit of shadowing to that a little bit of movement to there again I'm painting that bowl see I'm, I'm, my eye is watching this bowl let's get a little more of our red sometimes I just like a I don't have it on the other one, but I'm going to put it into this one. I just love that little stroke of red. So let's go in there like that. Just love that. Get this nice soft reddish tone out there. It's pretty. Yeah, like that. That's pretty. Nice little mottled. Nice tone there. There we go. I'm going to put a little, don't have it on the other one, but I'm going to put another little light kind of petal strike right in there. See, it's very casual. And these these roses are so casual like this. You do, uh, and I say this in my classes all the time, you paint what you feel. And if you start to uh, stiffen up at all, it'll show in your roses. And so, you know, you don't want to get into a copy mode because that'll... Just make your flowers just really stiff. You don't want to get into that that mode, so try to try to avoid that. See, that's kind of a pretty little flower there. We can add little, I call them little dinks, a little dink, 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 little light strokes around that will lighten that up a bit. And uh, let's come right into the center here and splash some of that red and white. Right down into the here, and I always say to my students, "What is that?" And we call them "I don't knows." It's I'm not going to come in here and make a flower. I'm just going to put in some movement, like there's a flower there. And we'll take some of that out with some red. But there's another flower in there, back behind there. Some of that movement. There. There we go. That one sits there. Nice little cooler, darker one right in there. Pushes right up against that one and that one. Nice little edge there. To that one. Yeah, that's kind of pretty. There we go. Maybe a little strike of pink there. Yeah. There we go. 
to soften that out. That's pretty good. Go up and put a little more movement on some of these others out here. Little touches. You can. I, I'll start as I get out to here to use my finger a little more than I did before. Uh, just causing quick movement, in and out movement here. Lights, not trying to put up uh, too much shape to it at all. Just giving it an edge every once in a while and a little bit of shape. There, like that, some casual stuff and a little bit there. Maybe a little bit more of a bowl here to this side that is facing the bird. There, like that. That's good. Yeah, that's kind of a pretty little, quick little rose there. That's what I look for is, you know, try to state it pretty quickly. That gives us a little bit of movement right in there. Try to state them as quick as possible, and they get really pretty. So let's just state this one pretty quick here. You know, it doesn't need to be very much because it's got the other ones there to do all of the heavy work of the rows for you. So these can go relatively quickly. Just put on the outside reaching pedals, pull in and out with your brush, and establish some movement and get out of there because we don't want that much into those there. Maybe a touch of light here. There we go. That's pretty. Get some darker ones on there, some, a little bit of light, but not too much light onto these out here. We want them just to fade away. Just a little bit. There we go. Just put a little edge in. Pretty, just little touches of the light. No more light. Very simplistic towards these out here. Just a little color, a little light. Not very much light though. Some color moving it around. Soften that, you know, leave a few edges there, but then just push it out and let it get soft out there. There we go, like that. That's kind of nice. Yeah, I might want to. As that thickens up here, and looking at everything, I might put a little more light right up here in the front of this one. Just push that, pull that down, push that around. You know, sometimes I'll use my finger just to lift off like that, and that does enough, leaves enough of a shadow in there as well. Makes it quite pretty to push and see some of these colors moving around like that into that rose. Here. here we go like that that makes kind of a very pretty rose when you push it around like that and now that this has started to it's not really too tacky but you know works into that that works so well looks so well and you can just edge in some other petals here idea of those petals 
Those are pretty. Yeah, that's pretty rose now when you get that softening movement of that color there. That's the main most important one. And this one back here. So we can push some of that around there. Let those colors go in and put a little coolness back there and just push those together. That's kind of pretty. So those two are the main. Your eye comes right around there like that, okay, which is what we want. It works. Now we'll just take some soft greens, blue greens. I like the blue greens because he is blue green. I mean, he is more towards the blue. So, you know, he's got this cool kind of look to him. So this blue greens are, are kind of um, are kind of nice to have in there. So we'll take some blue greens here. Make a little sky color right up in here into that. That'll give you some different things. And, and I'll, I'll do just very few shaped uh, leaves. Very few shaped leaves. But I'll do a lot of touching and stuff like that of these, these leaves out through here and working some of these little tones. Take some of that lighter blue color. So I'll vary this on the brush and I'll put some of that in through here. That gives you a nice movement of the color, but also keeping a little bit, you know, closer to him. But I will take some dark, and like we showed you before with other things, and I, I will come in and, and really kind of almost negative paint some of this area right in here. Okay, so this uh, stays right here into that, and it really kind of lifts, um, you know, lifts the... Uh, uh, the bird forward here, you know, and we'll drop some of that right down in here, just so you see a little bit of his Jurassic legs there, <laughs> just a little bit of them. Pull some of this out for a little bit of movement there, okay. Um, I'll use some negative painting stuff with some of the dark green maybe even a little brown to tone it down a little bit of sienna or red brown mix or even some yellow something to make it very color a little a bit and use some uh, negative painting almost out here just so you see the other side of that rose and we'll lighten that rose up or we'll right lighten those leaves up there just kind of sketch them on their shape on like that because they're going to the outside here. Use the chisel to kind of draw some movement there. Tap some of this movement further out here like that. It's nice. Get some of these greens here in this movement. You know, so I, I do put up a couple of shapes, you know, nice shapes. Like right through here, okay, I'll use some negative painting, shape the leaf, and uh, shape this one here. Okay, maybe a touch of movement out. You can use a little edge of shadow against that. There. Negative painting oh, is where you take the background and kind of paint up to the edges of that object. Here, like that, just get some of that nice movement out. We'll get a nice soft blue-green kind of leaf color. We'll add that into some of this, carry the bird color down in. Here. Good. Some of that nice bird color to a few areas here. Move that color around. A little yellow green. You can get some a little more yellow, but I didn't use too much of a yellow green in the original. It is kind of pretty to have a touch or two of that around in here. That's kind of pretty. Not opposed to changing. Do it all the time. Let's just drop some down. 
love to just put those edges in like a negative painted edge here just coming in like that here drop that in little bits of the dark little edges here that little shadowing color here there like that fills up that whole bouquet up here into the that side make sure you got some nice shadowing contrast I removed some of it up there so get a little blue and black if you really want to contrast, get a little red violet in there too for coolness. That works too. You know, how much you do, I always like to tell my students, that's up to you. That's your your painting. My job is to prevent is to show you the techniques I use and give you possibilities. My job is not to lead you through a project. I don't I don't project paint anymore. I don't think you'll learn anything from it. Yeah, you'll create a painting. But you can create a painting this way too. And it's more satisfying because you can turn around and do it again. Turn around and grab another bird, use the same type of techniques and you know, maybe different flower setup and, and do it again. It's where it gets fun. Let's just grab some of these. Just move some of this out a bit. Just give some little strokes of movement. there. That's what I love. This is the artistic part of it. Just coming out, moving some of this out and you know, adding some of that extra movement to lighten it up. Now the flowers themselves really come off the leaves. You can uh, take a, a nice lighter yellow green, a little white, some yellow um, here and I'm just coming out over here. Sky color, a little green, a little yellow into that. Make a lighter little yellow green and add a highlight. I didn't really on the original, but I think I will this time. Just for, just to put that in there. I wanted to keep it mostly to the cool side, but you know, this is really pretty right in here with this to have this lighter. Maybe we come right in here and, you know, hit a little bit of our light yellowy green right through here just really create this nice traveling bit a little more contrast than I did in the original so add it if you want don't add it if you don't like it here whoops there went his leg might have to just add that in right in there again just to give that feeling there Just a little touch of that green in there. Cover that just a touch. There we go. And uh, that looks kind of nice. Different. Different than the other one. And that's what's pretty. I was trying to make it a little different. Um, now I got it pretty smooth in here. The other thing that I like to do is just to make sure I got a good contrast there for the bird. Um, you know, add some of this. Uh, um, solid color here. You'll see me do it in the book. You'll see me do it on many things. I'll add some solid color up into there. I'll do that sometimes. I don't need to really do that here. I'm going to take a, a little bit of a, a green color, slight of, slightly dark green color here and add just like little, um, like little um, thorns and stuff like that out here on these. Just a little bit of a touch here. Breaks up that that look there, and we'll hit a let's get a little bit of a brown and yellow highlight there. Just take some of that out. It's a little too perfect there. Little brown black. Okay, 
just a bit of that shadowing in there. Maybe pull some of that look through here. So a little different than the original, just a touch, moving some of that around, the colors around and stuff. I really like that. A little more stuff here. Add some of those other touches and tones and stuff. But you get a real good idea there for that one. That's the Cerulean uh, Wobbler. Now we'll uh, take a quick break. I'll go grab a cup of coffee. We'll go over and we'll paint you a smaller little composition as well. Some more fun birds, okay? Thanks for joining me. I'll see you on the next one.